good morning everyone do not try to satisfy your vanity do not try to satisfy your vanity by teaching a great many things awaken people's curiosity it is enough to open minds do not overload them put there a spark if there is some good inflammable stuff it will catch fire by quoting anatole france we can understand what exactly obe is obe promotes active learning and lifelong learning which is an important aspect of current education system it is absolutely right time to focus on the topic exercise of outcome based education in english language and literature let's start this valuable session by invoking the blessings of the lord almighty praise be to the name of god forever and ever wisdom and power are his gracious heavenly father we praise and thank you for your presence guidance and support we offer everything to you during this webinar may we be living witnesses of your wisdom through the enactment of the knowledge which we are going to acquire through this activity let grace and peace be upon our lives we make this prayer through the same christ our lord amen here comes the head part of english Ms. Ms. Patricia Alfimbala to deliver welcome address. Pleasant morning can drag the potential energy from above. As the Almighty has defined the new task of the teaching fraternity during pandemic, the webinar has united the professionally committed teachers of the country together with the common mission of the younger generation. to safeguard them from the victimization of covid-19 the remedy measures of organizing such webinars are being materialized by the vision outcome of our principal dr sister yesurani our our new launch into the technical mode of knowledge enhancement is the effort of her who is rightly be here to preside over the session specialization and channelizations are always under the protective guidance of our secretary reverend sister queensley jainty who has been rightly here to bless us the technical exploration has become feasible for us with the supportive spirit of sister josita the head of the department of computer science we have received the respondents not only from various part of the country but also from all over the world it shows the triggering insight of the teaching faculty to work for the humanity in the protective measures against the corona teaching fraternity is marching as silent warriors to rebuild the society with the powerful students in post covid 19 in this preparation measurable outcomes of the re recent educational are going to be unveiled with the scholarly spirit of the vibrant professor dr veeramani by whom the session is going to be bloomed he is the professor from government arts college kulikarai his career covers various positions such as doctoral committee member recognized research advisor coordinator of accuracy and coordinator of center of center for soft skills he shared his expertise as a resource person and reviewer in, in international journals he proves himself not only in teaching but also in writing books he published rudiments of english communication and ilakkiya kodpadugal his wide knowledge has been recognized in so many ways through the awards such as professor ravindran cash award for best research paper best faculty award from integrated in uh, Intelli intelligent research chennai on republic day at achievers award 2018 kanavu nayagan abdul kalam award and sangha tamilan award the session will establish his caliber soon 
the PG Department of English expresses the heartfelt gratitude to the eminent resource person, the authorities of the college, and the teaching fraternity who have joined with us today. With this introductory note, I welcome you all for the webinar. Welcome, one and all. Thank you, dear ma'am. I welcome our dear Reverend Sister Dr. B. J. Queensley Jayanti, the guest of honor, Mother Superior, and the Secretary of our college to felicitate the webinar. Graceful morning to you all. I am truly delighted to welcome our eminent resource person, Dr. S. Veeramani, Assistant Professor of English, Government Arts College, Kulitalai, Tamil Nadu. Post COVID 19, webinars have become the order of the day as a platform that provides ample opportunities to enhance and enrich our academic caliber. It is with immense pleasure I welcome all the participants who are eagerly awaiting to lend their ears to our erudite resource person. I would also love to take a moment to appreciate Ms. Uh, Patricia Nirmala, HOD, Department of English, and the convener of this webinar, Sister Roger, Assistant Professor of English, Organizing Secretary of this webinar, and all the faculty members of English for their sincere efforts in organizing this webinar. I take this opportunity to sincerely thank Dr. Sister Shanda Mary Jasita, HOD of Computer Science Department, Sister Jodi, Assistant Professor of Computer Science, all the faculty members, and the technicians, Mr. Purushottaman and Ms. Bhuvaneswari for being a backbone in organizing the webinar on various topics. With the advent of the 21st century, higher education has become a rapidly evolving entity. The reason for the same is attributed to global economic competence and of rapid technical advancement pertaining to the field of education. Here, with the moving ahead uh, to our discussion point for the day, the use of OBE indeed tries to root out the last vestiges of the upper third education. With the out-based education, we can make the teaching and learning activities improved in an instilled manner to encourage the learners to get bright future after leaving their comfort zone from their institution. And learning is a process. If you take the example of learning as an outcome-based education, for instance, English is to develop the much needed communicative competence. I would like to quote Anotel France at this juncture, do not try to satisfy your vanity by teaching a very great things. You find or instill or encourage a curiosity in the pupil's mind. Do not overload them. So put there a sparkle. If there is some good inflammable uh, stuff is there, it will catch a fire. So thus, outcome-based education is in deep contrast to the traditionalist approach of importing education, where the teacher is the primary or even the only source of education, dissemination of knowledge. In the traditionalist approach, the student acts merely the passive receiver of knowledge. Whereas the outcome-based education promotes reformist active learning uh, system. In addition to the same, the outcome-based education encourages and vouchers for a lifelong learning system, which is the most important aspect of our education system. The passive learner, or rather 
a school for learner will never be able to discover new theories and knowledge through the process so if the knowledge acquired is next to uh, useless if they are not shared with the others it is at this point one needs to be an effective communicator as well in order to transmit the knowledge with their enthusiasm and the learners so here or the um, educator on the other hand need to apply a variety of strategies to allow the learners to demonstrate the learnings they have mastered so one of the many strategies available is that the learners engage themselves collaboratively in groups or in a pairs to demonstrate their outcome so in that case the teacher should motivate the learners to exhibit their talents and skills that they have learned through their uh, learnings so this is indeed a highly polarized and contemporary though we have at hand i strongly hope that our eminent resource person will enlighten address the gatherings in an effective manner to enhance the teaching learning technique innovatively and effectively thank you wish you all the best may god bless you thank you dear sister i invite a vibrant and dynamic principal reverend sister dr s jayasurani to preside over the session hello yes sister hello yes sister a respected resource person of the webinar dr s p ramani assistant professor of english government arts college kudithalai dr sister p j queensley jayanti mother superior and secretary of our college ms petisha alfi nirmala head of the department of english and convener of this webinar sister roger assistant professor of english and organizing secretary of this webinar other faculty members of the department of english sister josita hod department of computer science sister jodi mr prusothaman and other technicians their participants of this webinar a very pleasant morning to every one of you the whole education system is now moving from the teacher centric traditional education to the student centric outcome based education as per the guidelines of ugc and nag outcome based education has to be implemented in all higher education institutions so ob is the need of the r it is a student centered teaching a learning methodology that focuses on measuring student performance through objectives and outcomes at different levels this outcomes include knowledge skills and attitudes by the end of the educational experience each student should have achieved the goal early in the month of the may iqc of our college organized a one week webinar on outcome based education which gave deep insight on all aspects of obe from framing the outcomes to the attainment of the, those outcomes dear participants i hope this webinar will make every one of us to understand obe spe specifically for english language and literature at this juncture i congratulate the convenience for arranging this national level seminar on exercise of outcome based education in english language and literature i also appreciate their meticulous efforts in planning and conducting this webinar in a successful manner thank you may god bless you stay home and stay safe all the best enjoy the day thank you dear sister it's time to start the session i invite the chief guest and the speaker of the day dr s veeramani assistant professor of english government arts college kulitalai 
to take over the session. Yes, Dr. Pitt, um, Reverend Sister Dr. B.J. Queensley Jainty, Mother Superior and Secretary, Reverend Sister Dr. S. Jesurani, Principal of this college, and Dr. Patricia Alfine Nirmala, Head of the Department of English, and Reverend Sister Roger, Organizing Secretary, and my dear participants. Good morning to one and all gathered here virtually. At this juncture, as critics and educational psychologists say that outcome-based education is very much needed in the society, especially in the educational institutions. So in that case, we are in the proper time, in the need of the hour, to implement the outcome-based education in colleges, institutions, and especially, actually, this outcome-based education was implemented for the first time in India in engineering colleges. So in that way, they, they are doing productive things in teaching engineering and other subjects related to engineering. So here, it is very, very important uh, uh, topic which is relevant to the present scenario that is outcome-based education. I would like to uh, share my screen. Actually, UGC has given certain guidelines for English language and literature, exclusively for English language and literature, that outcome-based education can be drafted into some other name that is LOCF, that is a Learning Outcomes Based Curriculum Framework, that is what we call LOCF. It is a very latest uh, guidelines. It is very let. Uh, it is a uh, uh, latest presentation by UGC in 2019. It was uh, published on their website. Actually, I would like to tell you certain things taken from the UGC's guidelines for better understanding about what is outcome-based education and what is uh, LOCF. We can say that LOCF instead of uh, you know, outcome-based education. Uh, that is the broader term. Outcome-based education is an umbrella term, but in this umbrella term, we have the LOCF. Actually, it is uh, exclusively meant for English language and literature. And this preamble says, it is uh, given by UGC, the Department of English can appreciate, analyze, understand, and critically engage with the literary text. I will go with the cursory glance about the outcome-based education and LOCF given by UGC, and then, uh, it, it, it talks about the organizations can develop and uh, divisions and teams and genres and periods and authors and areas, etc., which are relevant to the literary text and so on. Yes, actually, we find that literature is a questioned discipline, whether we can adapt certain things in literature or not, because it is meant for uh, science, it is meant for arts, it is meant for language. It is meant for other humanities and something like that we, they are producing that kind of uh, issues in uh, this education scenario. So that's why literature is most questioned uh, discipline. So hereafter, there is no more um, uh, questioned uh, uh, discipline and so on because we have LOCF right now. LOCF by UGC's guidelines. And uh, actually, Tim Cook speaks. You find that. Actually, I wanted to uh, present my PPT. In the PPT, I cannot uh, uh, fix uh, uh, two or three tables um, in a one slide. That is why I would like to present my PDF presentation. Yes, Tim Cook speaks that maintaining balance between science and humanities. So in order to maintain the balance, balance of uh, um, credit, balance of a credit of a particular paper, particular subject, to maintain the 
this balance, to maintain the balance uh, between the science and the humanities, we have outcome-based education, especially the LOCF by UGC. This is the latest uh, UGC document. You can uh, go and browse through on the UGC website. You will find that LOCF for is exclusively English language and literature. And, and it uh, talks about human values. You find that I have uh, underlined uh, uh, with red uh, mark, you find that it is uh, talking about English language and literature talks about human values first of all. And then it includes various subjects like uh, Indian writing in English and uh, uh, black aesthetics and feminism and post-colonialism and so on. And then I would like to tell you is, um, yes, this is a very important point that we must understand. Actually, we in those days, I mean, not in those days, some years ago, I mean, uh, two years or uh, three years ago, we used to say that the PO, PO is a program outcomes. But here, what UGC says is PLO, that is program learning outcomes. And uh, it is uh, not CO, in la I mean, last year, or else two years ago, we used to say that CO, that is course outcomes. But here, what UGC says is, Course learning outcome, course learning outcome, C L O. Sometimes they in the same same in the, in the same document, you can say course level learning outcomes. So that is C L L O. Not that C O, not that uh, P O, but the P O is replaced by P L O. That is program learning outcomes. C O is replaced by C L L O. Course level learning outcomes. And what are the major aims of this LOCF is what is to be taught and what is actually learned. That is the aim of LOCF, first of all. What is to be taught and what is actually learned. It, it talks about only the student-centric. We it, it is oriented towards the student-centric, not that the teacher-centric. As the uh, principal says, no, uh, it is uh, not that uh, uh, teacher-centric, but it is uh, student-centric. So that is the point I would like to make uh, mention of that. And after that, yes. Um, the another point, yes, graduate attributes. You would have written graduate attributes and it has some nine points given here and you can browse through on the internet from the UGC website. And then, um, yes, yes, here, as I told you earlier, that is a program learning outcomes. It is PLOS, PLOS, we can say that. So on the basis of this particular program learning outcomes, we have to develop our curriculum, we have to develop our syllabus, the course, the course pattern, and so on. So it, it, I mean, the UGC has given nine, uh, really it's a nine uh, PLOS, nine PLOS. But whereas in engineering colleges, Especially, I mean, yes, especially in engineering colleges, that the NBA, National Board of Accreditation, has given the 12 parameters, 12 parameters, which is meant for all the engineering colleges pan India. It is not only for a particular engineering college, but also that the four, I mean, 12 parameters are meant for all the engineering colleges across India, not only for engineering, I mean, one, only one particular engineering college. So here we have uh, nine parameters, nine parameters, nine descriptions for PLOs. And uh, in, in the next slide, I'll tell you that I have added a few things and uh, I have created 13 PLOs. And 13 PLOs are from this guidelines of UGC, not from my own one, but all these are from the UGC's guidelines. I do not want to violate the spirit of UGC. No one should violate the spirit of the UGC. The spirit of UGC is given in this guidelines itself itself we find that yes uh, and then i have added here the relating literary movements uh, to social situations and the use of uh, and applications of a digital knowledge system actually in the, those days uh, the using digital technology and ict uh, on these things are uh, secondary as secondary when a knack comes no, they will ask question, have you used digital or else digital sources, the ICT, something like that. But this particular digital technology uses are incorporated in the curriculum frame itself. It is incorporated. We cannot uh, escape from this one. 
So PLOs, in the PLOs, we can add lifelong learning also, as the sister says. Lifelong learning, it is one of the important aspects uh, in this uh, PLO. And uh, uh, in order to strengthen your uh, curriculum, we can add uh, lifelong learning in your syllabus. Yes, I will show how I have uh, drafted uh, certain sample PLOs and sample CLLOs, something like that. Yes, it's a methodology. Methodology is all, I mean, uh, the pedagogy is also given. And then as I told you, you here you find that alignment of a program learning outcomes and course level learning outcomes are to be, to get, I mean, are to be uh, matched together to produce a yeah, very good syllabus. And then, uh, for each and every, they have given certain, some, some syllabus, some uh, courses. UGC has given some courses. Uh, in that course, they are giving course level learning outcome. You find that it is clearly visible and clearly I have underlined with the red mark, that is course level learning outcomes. It is not CO. CO is not meant for uh, this um, arts and science colleges, but CO is meant for engineering colleges. PLO is meant for arts and science colleges. PO is meant for engineering colleges. So like that, CLLOs can be had. And then here also you find that in the green mark, you know, CLLOs and CLLOs or something like that. So this is the UGC's guidelines that I would like to uh, tell you uh, before we take uh, my presentation. So that is the UGC guideline. If you browse through, you will understand very clearly. And then uh, what is uh, my present now? I begin my presentation. This is a outcome-based education OBE. The learning outcomes-based curriculum framework is called the LOCF. Actually, uh, you find that the disclaimer, it is my own way of understanding, and then you can have your own way of understanding. Yes, it is outcome-based education. Actually, it is started in, a, uh, actually, it was started by Washington Accord. Washington Accord is uh, an international agency which uh, accredits uh, the education, I mean, engineering colleges, the criteria, engineering colleges, the qualities. And later on, more countries adapted the Washington Accords framework, Washington Accords guidelines, especially for engineering colleges. And William G. Spaddy is a father of this OBE, that is outcome-based education. Actually, the first countries, Australia and South Africa, adopted this outcome-based education in 1990s. And then what is the need of OBE and LOCF? Yes, earlier, uh, we used to write objectives in the syllabus, first of all. We used to write objectives in the syllabus. Objectives are the teacher-centric. How a teacher is going to teach and what are the skills that a teacher has possessed and how he is going to uh, implement the teacher's skills among the students' activities and so on. But whereas in the present day scenario, outcomes, objectives are replaced by outcomes and outcomes are called the student centric. How a student is able to learn? What are the skills um, students have acquired? And what are the abilities that the students have acquired? So all these things are there in outcomes. That is why we have outcome based education, not that a teacher centric. So teacher is a kind of a, a moderator and a kind of a instructor only but the students must have some knowledges and some abilities and skills through reading or through taking a program. It is a program. And then the justification I would like to give you, what are to be taught and what is outcome? So that is the justification. What are to be taught and what is outcome? So uh, if you teach something, the justification should be there. So the justification can be had through the tagging of a, PLOs and CLLOs. So that is the justification. And what is the outcome? Already you predict the student's uh, future. Already you predict and determine the student's future and stud how a student will be uh, after taking this particular program. So that is the outcome-based education's very, very um, uh, major aim of this particular uh, the system, that is the LOCF. And then definition of outcome. Actually, definition of outcome in a sense, at the end of every course, at the end of every program, the students should have certain abilities, certain abilities given by the course, given by the program, given by the instructional units. 
program is nothing but BA degree is a program. BA, MA, MPhil, and BSc, MSc that are called the programs. A course is nothing but a particular paper is called the course. A particular paper is called the course. So we must have this kind of demarcation between course and program. And then OB in India, as I told you earlier, it was adopted in engineering colleges, in engineering institutions. So what, where is the uh, issue begins? The problem is we invite people from engineering colleges to give, uh, uh, what should I say, certain um, uh, uh, seminars and then uh, workshops and training and so on. What they would do is, what they have uh, implemented in their engineering colleges, they will come and tell you about the OBE and uh, LOCM, that's all. They are going to say, and all the engineering colleges, uh, OB, I mean the entities and the, I mean, the processes and the systems adapted in engineering colleges cannot be given in arts and science colleges because arts and science college has its own environment, its own uh, I mean, uh, pedagogical environment, its own educational environment. So engineering colleges are also having its own environment and so on. So that is the problem because engineering colleges, we have the 12 parameters to tag PLOs with the CLLOs, they have 12 parameters. Whereas we do not have 12 parameters or 11 parameters or 13 parameters or any, no parameters are available. So now UGC has given clearly about the parameters and the descriptions and so on. So on the basis of that, we can create we should not, again and again, I tell you that we should not violate the spirit of UGC, UGC's norms. And then uh, later, it, uh, this particular uh, OBE is adopted in engineering, I'm sorry, in uh, the arts and science colleges. Arts and science colleges. And uh, after that, uh, again, I would like to tell you certain things. Abbreviations. I have given abbreviations and uh, their expansions. PO, it, it was earlier. It was earlier. PO was earlier. PSO was also there, right now it's there, but in, in, in the document of English language and literature, that PSO is, uh, I could not find that PSO in this particular doc document, and PO is uh, very common to all, and CO is also earlier, it was uh, earlier practiced, and PLO is a present situation, that is a program learning outcome, and CLLO is a, a present situation, we can have that as a course level learning outcome, it is a narrower statement, yes, PO is uh, uh, this I mean, uh, after completing, after the graduation, uh, what are the skills that the students they have, that they, have, they will have, like uh, knowledge, skills, attitudes. Knowledge, skills, and attitudes after the graduation. PSO, what is PSO? PSO is the graduates will have the specific knowledge. Say, for example, if a person who completes uh, uh, B as a physics, no, he has to do something uh, with the electrical related works. That is what we call the specific skills. But if a person who has completed BSc in the electronics, they should have something uh, about the circuits. They will do some uh, repairing at, uh, activities in this uh, electronic circuits and so on. And then if a student who completes BA in English language and literature or MA in English language and literature must have the communicative skills, communication skills. This is what we call the specific skills, program specific outcome. This is what we call program specific outcome. Then PEO, program educational objectives. It is not that outcome here, we have only objectives objectives in the sense the students will have certain abilities to perform in career in career in life and professional performance so this is what we call pu pu we can include in our syllabus and then co course outcome that is what uh, it is replaced by cllo okay cllo that is earlier we had co co is the course outcome after successful completion of the course, I mean, the after successful completion of that particular paper in the uh, syllabus, okay, particular paper, the students should be able to know, the students will be able to understand, the students will be able to recognize, the students will be able to act or uh, illustrate and demonstrate, and uh, all these uh, verbs can be used. These, I will tell you about the Bloom stacks and I mean the next slide, okay. And then PLO, it is a program learning outcome. We have to 
develop the program learning outcome also. And then I would like to tell you, uh, five to six CLLOs can be written. Five to six CLLOs can be written. That is, uh, uh, that would be better. That would be better. It's not that the three uh, CLLOs are four LLOs or five LLOs and something, sorry, uh, one or two, something like that. I heard that uh, three LLOs are there, four LLOs are there. But we can have five to six LLOs, CLLOs. But I have created six CLLOs because we are going to adapt the six knowledge levels of a Bloom's taxonomy. So in that case, we can adapt all the uh, knowledge levels in uh, CLLOs accordingly. So that is why I tell you, this is my personal view, I tell you that we can include five to six CLLOs and NBA. NBA, you know that most of, uh, 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 everyone knows that uh, NBA, National Board of Accreditation. National Board of Accreditation is the primary accreditation agency body by central government, which recognizes engineering colleges, which gives some parameters and guidelines for engineering colleges. Yes, now you are uh, clear, I think so. I think so about the abbreviations and so on. Yes, the Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is still in 1956, it was written by Bloom. I still, it is relevant. You see that the relevance of Bloom's taxonomy. And this Bloom's taxonomy can be used to uh, in various places like Bloom's taxonomy in uh, uh, Twitter, Bloom's taxonomy in uh, uh, Google, Bloom's taxonomy in uh, knowledge, and Bloom's taxonomy in uh, social media. You find that in, you can uh, utilize the Bloom's taxonomy in various fields. And this is the revised Bloom's taxonomy that I am showing uh, in my, I mean, through my screen. And then the Bloom's taxonomy has six knowledge levels. Number one is uh, remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating for each and every uh, knowledge level. We find a certain uh, uh, action verbs. Action verbs are there. So action verbs, no, uh, if you follow the action verbs, and if you follow the, uh, the uh, action verbs to frame your uh, syllabus, to write your CLLOs, and to write your PEOs, and uh, to write your PLOs, automatically you are confined to a kind of a systematic writing of a uh, curriculum, systematic write of a writing of a curriculum. You will not deviate from uh, uh, this uh, um, educational perspective to some other perspective and so on. That is why the scientists, especially the educational scientists advise, okay, the educational scientists advise to adapt the Bloom's taxonomy, especially the revised Bloom's taxonomy in your curriculum, in your syllabus and so on. So it can be used, nowadays it can be used for the, um, what should I say, the question setting and so on. Question setting, where they can use it. Yes. Now, is, as I told you, this is the six levels of a Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, uh, actually, this is uh, divided into hots and lots. It is divided into uh, two th that are hots and lots. Lots is a lower order thinking skills that starts from remembering, understanding, and applying. And then hots, higher order thinking skills. It talks about, uh, I mean, it, it begins with the analyzing, evaluating, creating, and creating, evaluating, and analyzing. So these are all called the lots and hearts and so on. So we have to adapt these, uh, bloom, in, uh, uh, these Bloom's taxonomical uh, knowledge level and so on. Yes, now we can have that program learning outcome. PLOs, it actually it's the aim of uh, PLOs are after completing three-year degree program or two-year PG degree the students will possess knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And then the PLO statement should be societal relevant statement. And then I would like to give the exam, I mean, uh, definite, uh, give the definition for course level learning outcome. Course level learning outcome, that is a CLLOs. Actually, the definition of the CLLOs after completing at the end of the course, at the end of the course, that is a paper, paper, okay, paper at the end of the course, the student should be able to do something. So that is what we call the CLL course. And the course level outcome should be attributes, skills, and knowledges. 
these three are very important in writing course level learning outcomes and then this course level learning outcome it has to be observable and measurable it has to be observable and measurable it because we understand the students ability in the pause in the form of a measurable in the form of a measure and so on then writing course level learning outcome so here people may find it somewhat difficult to uh, write the CLLOs. you find that as i told you we can use the bloom's taxonomy to write a course level learning outcome that is c l l o s again and again i'll tell you that c l l o s not c o not p o p l o and c l l o s use action verbs use action verbs action verbs can be taken from bloom's taxonomy bloom's taxonomy we can have that action verbs and uh, uh, accordingly according to the uh, six knowledge level six knowledge level we can uh, take the action verbs from the bloom's taxonomy and then uh, use only one action verb some people can use uh, two or more than one action verbs so that is not advisable that is not advisable to use more than one action verbs and then the action verbs must be student centric action verbs must be student centric and students performance and students oriented students oriented so it is uh, outcome based education is a uh, LOCF everything is meant for students not for the professors not for the teachers not for the instructors but it is only meant for the students that's why the learning course level learning outcome should be based on student centric and then every CLLO should be an independent independent of other that means there is no overlapping you may find that overlapping sometimes but you have to justify it actually you have to justify the justification should be there but it is uh, not advisable to uh, get the overlap okay to get the overlap of uh, uh, the CLLOs and actually we have to include Bloom's taxonomy if you include Bloom's taxonomy you will not deviate from your uh, making the curriculum and uh, for drafting the syllabus with the very strengthened way yes and then we have to fit in aims and the content of the module module in the sense the units which you are uh, giving in the paper module that means the content which means you give the units units that and skills in the paper itself in the paper itself that is to be aligned with the CLLOs and that is to be aligned with the PLLOs sorry PLOs okay and then two action words if as i told you unless otherwise there is there is a reason you should not write two action verbs you should not use more than one action verbs which is only one action verb is enough only one action verb is enough to bring out the c l l o s and then very important point here i would like to make a mention of this is eliminate non knowledge elements <clears throat> eliminate non knowledge elements I could see some of the syllabus and some of the papers, they have used this many various, some different, such as more. Say for example, the students will be able to know many themes of English literature. The students will be able to know various techniques of English literature. The students will be able to know some techniques of English literature, some techniques in the drama. The students will be able to uh, differentiate, uh, the, I mean, the differences of uh, uh, points in uh, <coughs> points in a novel or poems, such as the now the points such as like that they will write. The students will be able to know more things about uh, the uh, Indian writing in English or something like that. The people can write. So what I tell you is, please eliminate non-knowledge elements. The outcome in the, in the outcome-based education, everything is measurable. Everything is calculatable. Okay, in that way, we have to use only the proper words. That is why if you are not able to write on your own, you just follow the Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy, if you follow that, you will not write anything beyond that. Okay. 
so you are confined to this particular thing so that is why i tell you that bloom's taxonomy at the same time uh, the uh, professors from uh, various institutions especially the experts the experts in this uh, clls or else uh, in the uh, locf they advise that you avoid the non knowledge elements and you please adopt the bloom's taxonomy to write to clls and every clls must be measurable and detailed ones and another point i would like to tell you here you find that avoid giving too specific and too abstract ones it's a kind of moderate statement in the moderate level the clls statement must be written so avoid too specific statements by giving some uh, exact numbers and the exact something like that and then two abstract ones it's a vague it's a vague so if you write that various and some and different many such as more your syllabus definitely will be abstract one so it is a vague one okay so that is why i tell you avoid to specific and to abstract ones and then <coughs> why mapping of clls with the plws actually p e o i told you earlier p e o that means program educational objectives not of obje- uh, outcomes program educational objectives that objectives must be attained in future that objectives must be attained by the mapping of clls with plws so these are the means these are the means to attain the peos okay so the uh, after end of the program as i told you program educational outcome peo after end of the program the graduates should have knowledge skills and attitudes knowledge skills and attitudes and then employability should be there and so social relevance should be there in the i mean peo yes so for this class only we map we tag we tag c we tag clws with plws i'll tell you how it has to be tagged and how it has to be done it's a kind of exercise i have done that exercise and i'll show you that and um, uh, this is the program educational objectives i told you before you write the program educational objectives you can write the name of the institution and vision statement of the department and then mission statement of the department some of the illustrious institutions some of the prestigious institutions they have a separate vision and mission of each department vision and mission of the each department so you create vision and mission of the department <coughs> and then that vision of the department mission of the department should be correlated should be matched with the peos program educational objectives that is you find that this line i would like to tell you the objectives of undergraduate program i am talking about undergraduate students okay because uh, still we did not uh, have um, the draft from uh, ugc for pg program pg program in english but only for a ug program in english it is available on the website okay <coughs> yes the objectives of undergraduate program of english language and literature are to this i mean program are to enable graduates to succeed in their chosen profession obtained by the skills and knowledge conducted by the course by the department of english so enable the students will be i mean the graduates this particular program the particular program enables the students to succeed in their chosen life and then it is to maximize their level of leadership qualities leadership qualities in an, uh, any organization in an in an, any organization by learning literary text by learning literary text so we cannot say that literary text what is uh, literary uh, text is going to uh, teach and tell you everything but it is not like that so that is why accordingly we have to develop the program educational objectives and plws and clls and then develop translation qualities translation it is uh, my own understanding okay develop the translation qualities at the contextual level in the sense at the local level or 
at the contextual level, at the uh, professional level, some, something like that. It talks about. So this kind of a PEO should be written for every um, program, for every program. Yes, the next slide. Yes, I would like to. Uh, <coughs> yes, before uh, uh, we can uh, get into this uh, sample writing and so on, I would like to uh, give you the sample program learning outcomes. Okay, sample program learning outcomes, PLOs for BA English and Language and Literature. Yes, this is the PLOs. I have given actually nine was there. I told you, you know, in the earlier, I told you that in the UGC website, in the UGC document, we find only nine. And I have added uh, from the UGC's, uh, UGC's uh, guidelines itself, from the UGC document itself, I have added certain uh, uh, points to strengthen the PLOs. PLOs. And last one is a 14. 14 one is a project. Some people have omitted project in the PLOs. PLO, PLO 14 is a project. Project is also a course. It is not that uh, uh, it is a separate entity, but it is incorporating the syllabus itself. If you omit the project, you have to omit the project activity in the college itself, in the department itself. So project should be included. Project should be included because it has credits, it has hours, it has a practical hours and so on. So that the project should be included in the PLOs. So it is very important point. I would like to make a mention of that because the project is meant for UPG, but I am uh, telling uh, uh, the UG uh, PLOs. You can add that. Yes, the description phrase. The description phrase, I, after analyzing the description by the UGC, okay, description given by uh, UGC in that particular document, I told you, you know, in that particular document, I have uh, created, um, after analyzing all these descriptions, I have created the description phrase. Okay, description phrase, I have done it. And then description. I, uh, here you find that literary PLO one is literary and language knowledge. PLO two is knowledge of interdisciplinary. Here it is included in the the, you know, the, uh, the interdisciplinary and interdisciplinary activity. It is also included in the curriculum itself. Okay, and then PLO three is a specific genre knowledge. Genre knowledge everyone should know. Every graduate of uh, uh, English language and literature must know the specific genre knowledge. And PLO4 is a, I mean, it's a cultural knowledge. We are talking about the cultural criticism. And the Department of English can be replay, I mean, can be uh, had, I mean, uh, what should I say is, uh, uh, in some of the foreign countries, uh, the Department of English can be replaced uh, into cultural departments, something like that. But here, we have uh, the same in the Department of English, but we can adapt the cultural knowledge and cultural uh, practices uh, in here, in this uh, curriculum statement. And then critical, the PLO 5 is critical thinking with digital resources. You find that at the, against the PLO 5, improve critical aptitude and reflexive and everything and knowledge with digital resources, with the digital resources uh, are given here so that critical knowledge with the digital resources. Why I have given the description phrase in order to tag the CLLO with PLO, it is very easy. We cannot write, read and write, we can understand the comprehend every description. It will take some more time. So in order to avoid that time consumption, we can have the description phrase here. So uh, this kind of description phrase are given in engineering colleges, as I told you earlier, 12 description phrases are given. It is, a, it is a, uh, um, common to all the engineering colleges pan India. It is a common, it is a very, very common. That is why they are able to do uh, with the flying colors. That's why they are able to do. But whereas here in arts and sciences, especially in English language and literature, we uh, find it very difficult to have the description phrase and so on. Yes, uh, the PL was, and then, the number PLO six is creative writing. For creative writing, you find that apply the values of literary judgments and literary writing skills and imaginative writing. So uh, to match with this description, I have given the creative writing. Then I have given this uh, literature, linguistic skills for occupation, especially in the context of occupation. In the context of occupation, 
and against that also you find that uh, it talks about influence with the reading text and so on uh, sorry this one uh, aviation communication and personality development for employability and skills and linguistics forms and everything is given and then criticism knowledge Criticism knowledge is meant for the critical theories, critical theories and criticism. We have the paper called criticism, classical criticism, modern criticism, and critical theories and cultural theories. We have these papers. That is why we, I, I can give you that criticism knowledge. And then PL19 is a culture and humanity with reference to the Indian context. Again, the present UGC what does say is we have to give importance to the culture of India. The culture of India. We should not violate the culture of India. We should not violate the spirit of India. So that it is particularly with the Indian context. Okay, culture and humanity in Indian context. So that you can develop your Indian writing in English and Indian translation in English and Indian regional translation in English. These papers can be included in your curriculum. These papers can be included according to the recent uh, uh, document. Yes, then PLO 10, we have use of ICT in literature and linguistics. Use of ICT in the I minute. Mean, several years ago, the NAC team will come, the, definitely the NAC team would come and they would ask the question Have you included ICT in your uh, teaching curriculum and pedagogy and so on? They will ask. So, a few professors will use that ICT and so on. But you find that the use of ICT in literature and linguistics it is incorporated in the PLO itself. So we cannot escape from uh, using a uh, digital, I mean, using the ICT technologies and so on, and so on. So that is the thing. Yes. Now, ethical values. The PLO 11 is the ethical values. PLO 11 is ethical values. You find that in order to build ethical values, moral values, and spiritual, religious, and environmental con consciousness, and uh, for that, I have given that ethical values and so on. Then PL12, leadership qualities, leadership qualities, and develop leadership qualities and judging capacities while reading literary texts. So against that, you find that. And then, as a sister told you earlier, uh, that is a lifelong learning. It is also incorporated in engineering colleges, and even in any arts and science streams, we can include that uh, lifelong learning. It is very, very important point. If we adapt the lifelong learning, if, the, if uh, NAC team comes, no. If NAC team comes, definitely you, you will be appreciated. You will be, you will be appreciated because of the inclusive of uh, the uh, lifelong learning. Lifelong learning is uh, after completing the grad graduation, you are helping the students. You are helping the students to learn to uh, instigate the learning uh, skills and learning practices and learning attitudes after their graduation. So that we can include uh, lifelong learning. Yes, and the fourth, uh, 14th one is the project. I told you earlier, we, we should include project also in this uh, PLO. Some people can omit that PLO, but we have to include project in the PLOs in the curriculum. Yes, uh, the, the, these are all the PLOs. The description, description are from UGC website, and then the description phrase, I have uh, given after analyze. Yes, now we can have the uh, a kind of a practical one. It is a kind of exercise. It's a kind of exercise. The syllabus we can have is uh, right now is Indian writing in English. Already is C O C L L O is written. You find that C O one is identify the very wide range of themes in Indian writing in English. Is it uh, specific or uh, is it uh, relevant or is it abstract or is it something uh, you find that? Is you find that? I tell you, identify the use of identify is not advisable in writing CLLO. The use of uh, identify identify is also found in Bloom's taxonomy. In Bloom's taxonomy, in the knowledge level, you find that I understand, but this particular CLLO identify that identify verb the action verb it is uh, it is not uh, advisable to use the action verb called identify because after completing this syllabus of, i mean after completing this particular paper if he is going to identify the wide themes and wide range of uh, indian writing in english so still that particular person the particular graduate the particular uh, uh, student is uh, in the level of uh, 
doing the things in the level of the reading and doing the things okay and then wide range of things you find that it is a wide range it is not non it is a non knowledge element actually wide range is a non knowledge element wide range in the sense you find a number of themes number of uh, uh, themes even today you find a particular theme tomorrow you find a particular theme the day after tomorrow you find a particular theme so that is why we can say that this is not the advisable use of identify is also not advisable and use of non knowledge elements like uh, some various variety and wide range something like that these are not advisable yes what i have written what i have written for this particular uh, syllabus there's a particular paper called the indian writing in english you find that yes when you write the sample it is a sample program learning outcomes as i explained to you earlier uh, a few minutes ago i explained to you about this uh, sample program learning outcomes so when you write this uh, sample program learning outcomes you write the degree and then as a uh, vision and mission statement of your department and another statement now you find that the graduates of the uh, undergraduate of english will have the following abilities and then when you come to the right side the course code you can write it and then indian writing in english that is the paper of the title of the paper and then sam it is a sample only you write this after successful completion of this course the students will be able to demonstrate indianness through reading the relevant text given the students will be able to analyze the literary terms in poem drama essay and novel the students will be able to relate their socio cultural themes found in the literary to uh, life and the students will be able to discover the indian philosophy with the relevant texts and students will be able to classify indian writing style and then the clo 6 is the students will be able to use ethical values through leaders so this is the uh, uh, draft that i have given you for uh, clo's uh, statements after writing number 1 clo you just write the knowledge level knowledge level k2 k4 k2 k4 k4 and k3 it is very important to write the knowledge level here also okay knowledge level you must write it knowledge level it will be very useful what i tell you is if a professor goes to class if a professor goes to class to take uh, some uh, class or uh, especially this particular uh, paper no that is indian writing in english and if he reads the pl uh, i mean uh, plo and if he is very much aware of the clos automatically he will teach uh, uh with the flying colors the course will be very very effective the outcome will be very effective that is why we have that outcome based education today the reason is the professor should learn the clos first of all before he takes the class before he takes the class before he gets in, into the, the classroom he must know the clos statements and then plos description and then he has to tag with each and everything and then if he goes and reads and no i mean it takes no definitely the program will be very very effective and the students will be very very happy and the outcome of the students will be very effective that is why you see that aim of uh, uh, lcm that it is not simply uh, drafted all, all on a sudden for uh, uh, executing for a uh, arts and science colleges for exec executing in engineering colleges or something like that but it has certain values it has its own greater values that is why we have that uh, clos and plos and i would like to tell you is the course assessment methods under the direct method we have assignment assignment in the sense written assignment the as in <coughs> the assignment can be poster presentation the assignment can be seminar presentation internal test internship still some of the colleges they have internship even for ba english and ma english internship along with the project work along with the project work internship is also very important if uh, nac comes no if you say that uh, we have uh, included internship in my uh, in uh, sorry in our curriculum definitely you will uh, get very good marks uh, for very good uh, scores in the nac Uh, accreditation and then group discussion why were was and everything you have to document 
every part, everything you have to document, even for assignment. I tell you, Daddy, don't get wrong with me. And I tell you, in my class, I give uh, them only two pages assignment. I already I have given the templates, the title, object, objectives, and then uh, uh, the, the definition, and then discussion, conclusion, and the resources where they have taken from. Even for first B English language and literature, they have to give the resources where they have taken from this. At least they can take from the uh, Wikipedia, they can write that Wikipedia, something like that. So it is a kind of uh, training the students for the direct method. And then indirect method, you know, you have that uh, course completion survey, course completion survey. And after the, um, yeah, after the end of the semester, I mean, at the end of the semester, uh, we used to get the feedback from the students, the feedback from the students. It's a kind of a course completion uh, survey. It is an indirect method. You can use, uh, nowadays you can use Google Forms. You can use Google Forms, then you can uh, send to them, then you can get it. Okay, uh, what I tell you is, it varies from institution to institution. The method of analysis, the method of assessment will vary from institution to institution according to their environment. And then it can vary according to the course distribution, especially the course credits loads. Course credit loads, it varies. So it depends upon the uh, particular uh, uh, college or particular department and so on. Yes, this is the thing I would like to make uh, clear of this. And then I come to how to relate, how to, uh, what should I say, uh, map, okay, how to map and how to tag of uh, CLLO with PLOs. CLLO with PLOs. Actually, this is the relationship matrix of course learning outcomes and program learning outcomes. Here, it is a table that I have created for this paper that is the uh, Indian writing in English. You saw that the syllabus, no? In, for Indian writing English, I have created uh, this particular, for it is only for the sample. And then, what is the prerequisite I have given here? It's a nil. Nil in the sense, uh, you need not have a prerequisite for uh, mapping the CLLO with the PLOs. Because you have completed MA, MPhil, PhD, and a certain net even for PDF and some delete or something like that. So you have a certain knowledge, you have a very good knowledge about uh, Indian writing in English. So that it is a prerequisite is nil. Okay, how do you map with the uh, CLLO with the PLOs? It's nothing, very, very simple. Some people can say it is very difficult to something like that. I tell you, it is very, very simple. You go to this uh, PLO1. What is PLO1? PLO1 is literary and language knowledge. It is a PLO1. And you are going to see, demonstrate Indianness through reading the relevant text given. So that is under knowledge level two. So you see that demonstrate, demonstrate in the sense they are not going to uh, demonstrate, I mean express, but here the demonstrate which means act upon, act upon Indianness, act as a person of India, okay? Act as a person of uh, the traditional Indian, traditional Indian. So that is the point here. Some of the, uh, what do you say, the Bloom stacks, Economical words, I mean verbs, the action verbs will uh, vary in certain uh, points, certain uh, points, certain situations. Okay, demonstrate Indianness through reading the relevant text given and how it is matched with, uh, it, does it have, does it have anything to do with the literary knowledge or uh, language knowledge? Yes, the basic skills, no, basic skills of literary communication. Literary communication in the sense, the literary product should communicate. Communicate this writing should communicate. Okay, the writing should communicate with the uh, uh, other uh, CLOs and so on. So here you find that it is a demonstrate Indianness with the literary knowledge. Demonstrate an Indian knowledge, and you find yes, it is a uh, uh, highly it is um, uh, uh, tagged with. It is a highly tagged with. It is a strongly it is a tagged with. So that I can give you. Uh, give, I can award five marks. This marks awarding is global format I have taken. The mark awarding process I have taken is global mark awarding system. Okay, so number it, 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 it comes, so it starts from a zero to five, zero to five. So you need not to give a zero because you are not going to write CLLO 
uh, which is very low in quality. You are not going to write the CLO in a low quality, but you are going to write your CLO in a very high quality and your program learning our outcomes will be in a high quality so that you have to give a, if it is strongly matched, if it is strongly tagged with the CLO and the PLO, it has about five marks in the first column, five marks, okay. And then what I tell you is, if you are not able to give five marks and so on, just rephrase, rephrase and restructure the CLLOs. And accordingly you have to write, and accordingly you have to match with that. It is very simple format, it is very simple format. And then um, you find that the same, I mean, uh, the second PLO is, second PLO is knowledge of interdisciplinary. That's the person who is going to demonstrate of Indianness has the interdisciplinary knowledge. Has the interdisciplinary knowledge? You just question uh, this one in your mind. Okay, I, I'll tell you, my dear my, my participants, it is not a, a single one man army. It is not a single person can do it. If, uh, if the particular syllabus, Indian writing English, is uh, shared by two people or three people or uh, four professors, they should uh, sit and do it. They should sit, they should analyze, they should know the, the CLLOs and PLOs and then award marks. So it is not that a paper who is handling, uh, yeah, you do it. The paper who is handling the Shakespeare, you can do it. Uh, a person who is handling literary criticism, you can handle it. It is not like that. If a particular paper is handled by three or four professors, they should sit, they should have all these in your mind. Only then you are going to produce, only then you are going to produce the uh, very good uh, products, I mean, very good students, okay? The students will have certain knowledges and skills and uh, uh, globally competent, globally competent students in this, uh, uh, through your curriculum, through your syllabus, through your college, okay? So you have to do it, automatically the outcome will be very very great if you do like this the outcome will be very great so that is why i tell you that a yeah, very good student i tell you today in the 21st century if a student joins in a college joins a college i either arts and science or engineering colleges he or she must know the cllos and plos first of all he has to or she has to be aware of clos and plos before he or she joins the college so in the, like that, they are going to do here after, after the execution, after the exercise and the execution of uh, this particular, uh, uh, this OBE, the students will uh, do like that only. Here after, it's going to be happen, just you said, we can see that it is going to happen. Yes. And then number, I uh, yes, CL1, how it is uh, matched with the specific genre knowledge. Does it have, CLL1, does it have anything to do with the specific genre knowledge? Yes, you find that specific genre knowledge is there. Because you are going to express the specific genre knowledge, what is drama, in the beginning itself. In the beginning itself, you are going to express to the students, explain to the students that is what is drama. Drama is, uh, uh, it has uh, various stages acts and uh, scenes, something like that. You are going to say that even for the novels, you find it is not like a short stories, everything you are going to give. So the it is a strongly associated uh, with the PLO. Then CLO is strongly associated with the PLO 3. Okay, then what is a PLO 4? PLO 4 is cultural knowledge. How the PLO 1 is uh, tagged with the cultural knowledge? Yes, you just understand in the beginning itself you are not going to do the cultural knowledge okay in the beginning itself uh, you are not going to do the cultural knowledge and uh, so that uh, they have been uh, throughout the course only they are going to to have the cultural knowledge and so on. So in that case, but they have some cultural knowledge because they are going to there in, in, in India. So I can put four instead of five. Instead of five, I can put four. And then in PLO five, what is PLO five? The, the CLLO one has anything to do with the PLO five, digital and critical thinking with the digital resources, the number five, critical resources are the, yes, the digital resources. It is not that um, from the, Beginning digital resources. Okay, in that case, I can put only the three marks, that the three points. And then PLO6, what is PLO6? You just read that, PLO6. It is a creative writing. Creative writing. 
does CLLO1 has any relationship with the CPLO, PLO6, that is a creative writing, PLO6, you find that, no, all on a sudden it has no creative writing. So uh, it, it is in the moderate level, it is in the moderate level. So like that, you find the calculation for each and everything, and then you find that uh, uh, the Indian, you find that uh, CLLO5, CLLO5, you find classify Indian writing style that is coming under knowledge for classify Indian writing style in uh, uh, how you are going to associate to uh, of uh, CLLO5 with the PLO1. You just understand that it is a CLO6 and PLO1. CLO6 and yes, it is Indian writings and it's uh, uh, you find that yes, uh, yeah, writing style. You are going to classify the writing style. It has uh, some knowledge. Okay, it is a communication. It's there. Communication in the sense the literary communication. Literary communication, which means the texts are uh, communicating. The lines written in the text, you no, know, by the writer will communicate. So like that. So you find that this is what we call the mapping table. This is what we call that mapping table. Okay, dear friends, and then this. Uh, mean score how do you identify this i mean i cannot give all the 14 uh, uh, plos with the, all the six clos it's very difficult also okay you can do it you can do it when uh, you can write the description phrase and description and then uh, clo statement you can match with that okay you can match with that if you are not able to uh, find a particular phrase or sorry particular uh, uh, verb which satisfies you, no? Which satisfies you, but you can rephrase it, or you can uh, again you take any verb, any action verb from the Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy, yes. And then you find that it's you. The mean score is uh, actually it's a CLLOs. Okay, the mean score of the CLLOs will be you calculate all the table here, and then the mean score value. How do you identify the mean? I mean, calculate the mean score. The total values. The total values will be some values will come there. Okay, total values, and then you find that total number of PLOs, total number of PLOs, total values of CLO one, and then total number of PLO thirteen PLOs I have given. So you have a three point nine, three point nine. So like that for each and every paper, each and every paper you can sorry each and every column, each and every column you can do it, and then. How do you identify and how do you have overall mean score for CLLOs? Overall mean score for CLLOs. Yes, mean overall score for CLLOs will be total mean score. You find that total mean score will be three five mean certain values will be there. Okay, uh, total mean score, and then you find that total number of CLLOs. Total number of CLLOs on the left side. When you divide that, no, when you divide that in that formula, formula, you find something 3.8. 3.8 will be there. So there is 3.8 is the uh, to, I mean, uh, uh, overall mean score, overall mean score for CLLOs. Okay, so 3.8 is the result. I can tell you the result. The result is the score for this course is 3.8. So here we find the 3.8 is under the high level you find that 61 to 60 percentage 61 to 60 is 61 to 80 percentage and this comes under this uh, high level so this uh, paper can be incorporated in the syllabus in the curriculum this particular paper can be incorporated in the syllabus if it comes to moderate you just change your uh, syllabus uh, units okay so in the in the paper you find certain units that units can be replaced and then you uh, i mean add some other units which is relevant to the clo and then you have to rephrase the um, rewrite the clo statement along with the bloom's taxonomy and then you come to a tagging uh, method you come to the mapping method you find that it is uh, uh, it is uh, what should i say um, it's a clearly it is a tagged. It's a clearly and it's a, a totally it is a tagged under the high level learning. Okay, and then this particular paper is uh, it is having uh, three point eight score. 
3.8 score. It is a high related in a high relationship. So this particular paper can be retained. And this can be given. So like that for every paper, for every course, course is nothing but a paper. As I told you earlier, it's a course is nothing but a paper. For every paper, you have to give this kind of a table. That is the matrix of a, uh, you find the relationship matrix of a course learning outcomes and program learning outcomes. This table, uh, this table to be included, this table to, should be fixed for every paper. It's not that uh, overall, but I, diagram but uh, for uh, every paper you have to include it so this is the uh, example for literature paper but now i am going to give you one more example one more exercise for that the language aspects language oriented so for that language oriented i have taken syllabus for introduction to phonetics introduction to phonetics and you find uh, introduction to phonetics uh, uh, some units are there airstream mechanics uh, okay mechanism and then uh, consonants uh, definition vowels and phonology and words stress and pronunciation everything you find that the same plo where you saw that no uh, the same plo it should be brought here i mean uh, it's a general one for uh, um, common one you can have it uh, from the beginning itself from the beginning of the syllabus itself you can have that uh, um, plo and you need not to bring uh, that uh, plo here to match uh, with the clo every time just a clo can be written because it is a different one it is a different one for the different paper so that we can have that clo statement yes again you find that the paper code and for introduction to phonetics with the title of the paper and then you find uh, after successful completion the same exact statement will be there okay the after successful completion of this course the students will be able to know what are the fundamental characteristics of phonetics the students will be able to apply pronunciation skills in communication practice with the international phonetic alphabet and the students will be able to classify the organs of a speech the students will be able to utilize pronunciation skills in career okay in career but you find that in communication but here especially exclusively for career okay the person who completes a, a ba in english language and literature he or she may not go for a career may not go for a profession but in a communication skills they must make use of that uh, skills and so on so i have differentiated and for that i have uh, uh, justified how i have uh, used and i have uh, how i have written the clls statements and so on and then the students will be able to distinguish between english words and their sounds english words and say their sounds say say for example uh, you find uh, certain words are very um, uh, what should i say uh, debut you see say for example debut is the word debut is the word but their sound will be debut okay so they are able to understand what is the sound what is the sound and what will be the word so in that case i have uh, distinguished between english words and their sounds okay and then uh, uh, the last uh, clo is uh, the students will be able to perceive the difficulties of pronouncing with the local context with local context in the sense in the indian context so okay so indian english will be something different the regional language will be something different the person who speaks from one one one, one uh, state they speak in different uh, um, <coughs> manner they speak in english in a different manner so it is to perceive the difficulties it is to perceive the difficulties of pronouncing with local context okay so this is the uh, uh, table of a CLL statement. Okay, this is the table of the CLL statement and so on. So how you are going to relate the uh, num number one CLL that is know what are the fundamentals, uh, fundamental characteristics of a phonetics with language knowledge. Actually, I have given this literary and language knowledge and literary is meant for literature and here language knowledge is meant for language papers like phonetics linguistics and then elt papers okay elt papers and these papers can be incorporated here so that is the point that i have given that the language knowledge and literary knowledge
and then again i will tell you that course assessment as i uh, explained to you earlier that is a direct method and indirect method that is a course completion method or survey for indirect method and direct method for all these things you can find that so again i will tell you it is varies from institution to institution and how i am going to map i actually here also you find that the prerequisite nil nil in the sense uh, you might understand uh, the uh, I mean, uh, language skills and the phonetic skills and you would have studied uh, ma i mean in your ma or in your ba that is the phonetics and you would have completed your research also research also but if it is necessary if it is necessary for example some of the papers like uh, uh, interdisciplinary interdisciplinary you should write that the interdisciplinary the particular interdisciplinary knowledge is required the basic knowledge of that the fundamental knowledge of environment the fundamental knowledge of linguistics the fundamental knowledge of uh, uh, psychology say for example if you talk about this particular paper uh, linguistics if you talk about linguistics rather than uh, introduction to phonetics for linguistics you must have a certain knowledge about the psychology the knowledge about psychology or else neurology okay neurolinguistics and the structure of uh, function of your uh, uh, psychomotor activities psychomotor activities like something like that so in that case you can write that prerequisite will be the basic uh, uh, fundamental knowledge about psychology you can write that otherwise you just put nil and then clo map a uh, clo and how it is mapped with the plo mapping so that is the thing uh, and then you write that relationship matrix of a course uh, uh, learning outcomes course learning outcomes and program learning outcomes yes you find that uh, here you just go back you just go back it is a, i'll tell you that it is not that one man army it is not that one man army the person who shares the paper they should uh, do that they should do that um, collectively and actively they should do it and then what are the fundamentals fundamental categories of phonetics language yes it is to know so strongly i give you that because in the big from the beginning itself the professor is going to tell you i mean tell the students tell the students about the fundamental knowledge yes strongly i agree that the fundamental knowledge the professors they are going to teach the students okay let's say you find that the second uh, thing is the uh, second plo knowledge of interdisciplinary knowledge of interdisciplinary uh, does it have uh, this a fundamental categories of phonetics with the knowledge of interdisciplinary yes it has a something it has a something knowledge of interdisciplinary how this has knowledge of interdisciplinary the organs of speech no the organs of speech is there and also certain psychological level is also there so that i can give you give i can award that to four points here so like that you can map like that you can map and each and every uh, CLLOs, every CLLOs along with the 14, sorry, the 13 uh, PLOs. Here also, I tell you that it is a project which is a 14. Okay, so with this, you can uh, <clears throat> map the overall things, overall thing, I mean, uh, overall outcomes and the learning uh, outcomes and the course learning outcomes, uh, program learning outcomes, and so on. Then, as I told you earlier, the same matrix can be used. The same matrix can be used. So, actually, the overall mean score will be 3.7. In the year, year we saw that 3.8. But now, he, uh, now we can see that uh, 3.7. Uh, <coughs> this uh, 3.7 is in the high relationship. The 3.7 is in the high relationship. So that this paper can be incorporated in the syllabus itself, in the syllabus, in the curriculum itself, we can incorporate. Otherwise, we need to restructure, we need to rewrite uh, the CLOs and so on. So that is the point I would like to make. Then the assessment priorities, assessment priority, formative assessments and summative assessments, and it is up to the uh, educational institutions, educational institutions, and uh, it is up to the um, uh, department concerned. The department concerned, they can do it. Uh, this assessment values and so on. So uh, with this, I complete my small presentation. Okay, it is not that uh, in a detailed manner, but it is a very, 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 very small presentation about OBE and see uh, I mean. Uh, uh, this one, um, LOCF, sorry, LOCF. Uh, <clears throat> with this, I complete and I thank and I have everyone who has given this opportunity to uh, share my uh, views and my 
uh, as assignments and uh, analyzing statements about PLOs and CLLOs with you. So I thank you very much. Thank you one and all. Now over to the organizers. Thank you, dear sir. Thank you, madam. Dear participants, if you have any queries, you can raise your hands or else you can uh, post your queries in the chat box. Dear participants, it is your time. If you have any queries, you can please raise your hands. If it is not, you can post your queries in the chat box. Annapurni ma'am, please unmute your system and speak. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. I'm Ms. Annapurni from Mary Mother College. Okay. I formerly worked at Jairaj Annapakim College. Okay, okay. After okay. retirement, I joined the college. I would like to make some compliments. Sir. Okay. It's very comprehensive. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. And so we have learned so much. Okay. And actually, until this morning, we have heard of only that CVOs and POs alone. Okay. But now we have given uh, what is found in UGC, UGC oh. guidelines. Yes. And so it is something new to us. And uh, we are um, ready to probe into it and learn more. Okay. Could we have your mail ID, sir? If at all we have doubts. Could you, is it possible yeah. to give your yeah, PPT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possible, do you think uh, it's yes. right to give your PPT? Hello, yes. sir. Yes, 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 ma'am. I'm doing. I do. I'm uh, doing. If you could give it, and so we could go yes, through it yes, again. My, yes, and yes. And especially yes, the yes, mathematics and all those things, calculation. Yeah. It has yeah. need time to see it, sir. Okay. Okay. So okay. we have understood uh, what you have said. Okay. We want okay. to learn please more about more. it. Please do one after one. If you don't mind, uh, uh, please yeah. give your PPT and your mail ID, please. Yeah, my mail ID is there on the screen. On the screen, my mail ID is there. Please uh, uh, take it. Are you able to see my mail ID, ma'am? It's not, sir. It, it is not visible. D. It's, uh, yeah, it is visible, ma'am. Oh. It is there on the screen. Oh. Yeah, in my yes. organization, ma'am, you can uh, highlight this. Actually, my email ID is dvira d twenty twenty at gmail dot com. Dvira, please, sir. Dvira. Ah. Uh. D. Ah, uh, yes. Twenty twenty. Yes. At gmail dot com. Thank you very much, sir. Definitely, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We owe so much to you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It's very clear and very, very uh, actually very clear presentation, sir. Very Good. impressive Thank presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Vishwanath, you can ask your question. Please unmute. So, hello. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, thank you for your comprehensive and detailed presentation. Thank you. Uh, so, my question is, yes. so I am working I am working in an engineering college in Andhra Pradesh. Where so, we have, we have applied for MBA and uh, we have been doing MBA work for the last three months. Okay. Uh, but we have uh, used CO and PO for English. Yes, but but you have said CLLO and uh, PLO. Yes. So can we use this terminology? Will they accept our management? Will they accept, sir? 
definitely the management should accept it because i am not telling my own clos or my own abbreviation and so on but uh, it is from ugc's guideline ugc's yes, guideline sir. hello yes sir yes, sir yeah ugc's guideline you see that here you are you able to see my slide right now yes sir yes, sir. yes course level learning outcome C L L O S. Okay, this yes, particular highlighted writing is mine. Okay, but yes, here C L L O S. Course level outcomes for Indian classical literature. For this paper, Indian yes, classical sir. literature, we have course level learning outcome. So I am not telling on my own, but I have yes, taken sir. from the UGC's guideline. Okay, yes, so they have to accept it. Otherwise, they are uh, uh, doing something. Uh, against the spirit of UGC, yes, sir. Uh, yes, spirit of UGC, and you find that uh, the learning outcome-based curriculum framework (LOCF) for BA literature, English literature, BA Hans. So you may ask yes, this sir. question, sir. What is a Hans and a, a BA in general, sir? You can ask this question. It is yes, a very sir. very simple uh, uh, demarcation. Is in three-year uh, BA degree, they are going to specialize the subject. Specialized yes, like sir. doctors are specialized, not like that. Yes, Whereas yes, in sir. general, uh, BA English language literature, it's a common, it's a common to all. So that is yes, the sir. small difference. Okay. Okay, sir. It, it, they have one to more thing, it. sir. Yes. And uh, POs also completely different, sir. So in engineering, there are 12 POs. So yeah. which are completely different from what you have said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I am telling. That's what I'm very good question you are asking. Actually, yes, for engineering colleges, the POs will be different. And for arts and science colleges, the POs will be different. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. you are dealing with machines. You are dealing with the uh, machines and the computers and technological oriented for each and everything you use technological oriented. So accordingly, yes, that the parameters of a PO will be different. But here yes, we are dealing with the humans. We are dealing with the emotions. We are dealing with yes, the values. Values yes. and Indian culture, cultural studies. So the PLOs will be different from engineering colleges. Yes, sir. Okay. But I think there will be some fight between uh, English faculty and management, sir. No, no, no. We, it, is, it is not that fighting, but the because they ask us to follow their PLOs only. Engineering college PLOs only. For arts and science or for engineering colleges? Engineering colleges, sir. Yeah, engineering colleges, they can use POs. Yes, sir. But for arts and science, they can use PLOs. Okay, sir. Okay. But that is the difference. Okay, sir. Thank okay, you very thank much, you very sir, much. for the presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Your examples are also very nice, sir. One for literature and one for phonetics. Oh, very good. Very so, good. we have understood very clearly, sir. Okay, thank you. So, thank you once again, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shanmugam. Immaculate, ma'am. Ah, yes. Yeah, you can uh, ask your question. Yes. yes. Um, hello, sir. Good afternoon, yes. sir. I'm Immaculate. Yes, good afternoon. Um, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, you were talking about this PLO 11. In that, yes. uh, you spoke about um, independent learning, independent lifelong learning. So, yes. uh, my question is that. Um, as, to, as literature, as uh, literature uh, faculty, can we uh, opt self-paced learning papers under this session, sir? Under this yeah, particular period, we can include. We can include under this is yes, a lifelong sir. learning. We can include and the self-paced learning. Uh, that thing can be posted on the website itself. In your college's website, you can post that kind of learning uh, attitude, and then uh, the graduates can. Uh, uh, take the course, the self-paced course for the lifelong learning. It's a very good question what you asked is. Yes, we sir. can do it. Actually, they all these uh, drafts. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, Hello? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the reply, sir. And I'm grateful for, uh, in spite of your busy schedule, or made your presence through okay. virtually. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank Dr. Viram. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Rama Devi, yeah. you can ask your question. Good morning, sir. I'm Dr. Rama Devi. Good morning, from, madam. From Andhra Pradesh, yeah, Vijayawada, sir. Yeah, sir, I have been uh, working for uh, engineering college for the past 16 years. Okay. 
so one uh, common doubt generally what english faculty engineering colleges we come across is uh, we have supplementary reader and main reader in engineering right. colleges we have supplementary reader 1 and uh, main reader 1 okay uh unit 1 in this and unit 1 in this should be considered actually as a whole right. unit okay okay so while writing see we are asked to we are asked to write you are not uh, you are not going to give the program actually for engineering colleges you are not the english faculties are not going to uh, no no mm. we are not going we come under basic science and humanities yeah uh, so the problem is that uh, yeah. while writing uh, covs while writing covs and mapping uh, pivots okay the problem is that we have to consider unit 1 in supplementary reader and unit 1 in main reader under one unit okay and we need to write the comprehensive uh, the whole uh, clllos co co ah oh, okay okay sorry co co oh. and hmm. there we are getting one problem major problem is that context is different and this content is different it just you put that mark 2 uh, or 1 or 0 You just write. You just write. Ah. With, uh, you just write with uh, Bloom's taxonomy, and then you relate that accordingly. So your justification should be there. You are just. No, sir, please. Writing C O, sir. Right. We need to write C O. No. First of all, we need to write course outcome. Okay. Course outcome. You write that. How so to write, sir? We cannot. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I'm that is different. Telling. Uh, ah yeah, sir have have you understood my question yeah yeah that's what i'm telling you are ah. getting difficulty ah. to match uh, cl co with po sir Is first it... of all we need to write co then only we need to map with po no sir yes ma'am i am writing a co is becoming difficult that is my problem our yeah. problem that that's what i'm telling that writing a co is difficult in the sense you hmm. have to So take the phrase from Bloom's taxonomy according to the PO one or PO two. It is it depends on you. It depends on you. So you just write the phrase. That's all. You just write the CO statement according to that need of the PO one or PO two. You take the verbs, action verbs from the Bloom's taxonomy, and then if it is not tagged with the PO and the CO, just put in the column of a, a matrix as a one or two, something like that. So it it is a it just give me your PO. You just give me your PO, and mm -hmm. I will write that CO. You you can post in my mail. Oh sure sir sure sir you can post sure, in mail right? you give me okay. the pivo and i will write the co and i'll give it to you okay sir thank you sir and it was very informative sir and uh, we we our college was accredited with nba and nac even but still we have so many doubts sir of course we did nba we did all the work we did all the work for uh, nac and all that but still we have so many doubts sir Okay, okay. And uh, so many doubts uh, in this uh, session. I got so many doubts clarified, sir. Oh, doubts are clarified. Thank uh, you. Sir, thank, thank, you thank, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very thank much, sir, for your you. very informative session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. Vidya, ma'am, it is your yes. turn. Okay. Uh, congratulations to the resource person and uh, the entire team. Uh, it was a very informative and comprehensive presentation. Uh, thank you. um i i have a query i'm from loyola college chennai uh, uh i have a query uh we uh, we have uh, these sessions mainly for the teachers uh, but can we have uh, some programs for the students because as you started your session you said it's a student centric uh, uh approach so yes. can you enlighten the students with these information Uh, so that uh, they understand the value of this uh, uh, innovative uh, methods and uh, you know approaches and uh, pedagogies yeah you can include ma'am yeah. the innovative approach and it uh, varies from institution to institution yeah. i told you know the course assessment method and everything it varies from institution to institution so you can incorporate your method of I mean pedagogical differentiation you can include it so values and uh, interdisciplinary approach and everything you can include and accordingly you have to write the clllo and pivots yeah. okay. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Santosh Kumar, you unmute your mic. Santosh Kumar, are you there? You can mute. Durka, do you have any queries? Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And this is Durga. Yes. Um, it was really a wonderful session because uh, uh, I'm working in an arts and science college. Uh, we have uh, only POs and COs. Uh, uh, so it was a new thing for us uh, uh, having PLOs and CLLO. It was really new. And uh, hats off to you for coming up with such a uh, informative information. So I'm really happy about it. Um, as if I don't have any queries, but just I was so happy and excited to see your presentation. So I just wanted to appreciate you. Okay. And I saw a participant asking a question regarding uh, uh, engineering. She had a yes. uh, problem with uh, uh, writing CEOs. CEO, yes. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. She was mentioning about uh, two different uh, things she has to collaborate with uh, uh, and uh, make it as unit one. It was just uh, uh, you know, input for her uh, through yeah, your session, through this forum. Yeah, it's just like uh, uh, we need not think about unit wise. Uh, uh, just like that, uh, uh, we can write COs. Uh, we need not uh, think have in our mind that uh, uh, when for each unit we have to write CL COs. Uh, so that is only one thing I would like to say. For each unit, we really use self, use paper. No, for papers we would be writing C COs, no doubt at all. Okay. But okay. just uh, she her query was like uh, uh, you know uh, merging the two sector and writing. Uh, yeah, that I understood. Uh, I understood. I, understood. Yeah. I asked her oh, to yeah, send yeah. that syllabus yeah, and so yeah. on. So and that I is what and I will explain to it. It was really wonderful session. I was so happy uh, to have a lot of uh, information from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, the organizers. I'm thanking the organizers too. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, there are yes. some questions from the chat box. Yes. Oh, let me read now. Yes. A question from Lalita. In language or literature, what kind of internship can be done? What kind of internship can be done in the sense uh, how language is used in the profession of different kinds, the profession of different kinds like that, for example, you, you can ask the students to go and work under the lawyers, under lawyers, and how they are writing the legal language and the legal scripts and so on. They can interpret and they can do it. So for seven days or 10 days or 15 days, they can do it. So it is not only for uh, legal practices, but also for the medical practices. And um, they can go to uh, any uh, concerns, any concerns, any departments, okay, they can, uh, execute themselves and they are going, I mean, they can use, make use of their language skills to the aim of that particular concern, particular department, particular organization. So in that way, we can have that internship program for the students. And then how to take questions paper having OB in mind, mind, sir, in mind. Actually, in mind, in the sense, you have to memorize, first of all, if it is there, the word in mind, you have to memorize every uh, so now knowledge level, knowledge level of Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, so knowledge level, uh, you have to incorporate Bloom's taxonomy, Bloom's taxonomy and their action verbs in the question paper setting. So it is another part, actually, what you asked this question, Ajit, the Ajit, eh? how to take question papers having OBE. It is a part of assessment and setting uh, uh, the question papers. It's another part, it is yet another part, it will take some more time, but you can follow the Bloom's taxonomy. Because we follow the Bloom's taxonomy earlier in the OBE. So in that case, we can follow the Bloom's taxonomy also. So it depends on your uh, uh, department. And how can we frame the syllabus for American literature and post-colonial literature? You see, you frame the syllabus first of all. Okay, you frame the syllabus. When you write CLLO is the, some bit, bit difficult. So you frame the syllabus as usual. As usual, you uh, put forth uh, the syllabus to Board of Studies and then you bring out 
and then we have to write the CLOs according to the uh, post-colonial literature and American literature. The problem is writing CLLO only for everything. The madam is also, she also asked the question, how to write a CLLO? So that is the thing. And then is, the, is this uh, model useful for school education system too? I don't think so, but uh, it is meant for, this model is meant for uh, arts and science colleges. But I'll tell you, you just uh, in the inbox to me, and I'll tell you after uh, gathering the information. Next, how Bloom's taxonomy can be implemented on uh, online, online, uh, online to students effectively, Bloom's taxonomy. How Bloom's taxonomy can be implemented? Bloom's taxonomy, you can implement through questions, through multiple choice questions. MCQs, you can use Bloom's taxonomy. So in that way, we can I, I make use of that. I need for uh, writing the essay questions, you can use Bloom's taxonomy. See, it's very simple. And how to write a justification for a course? What are the points to be included while writing in it? Yes, just about how to write justification. A justification can be had uh, because of the, the effective CLLOs. Because of the effective CLLOs, when you uh, uh, tag the effective CLLOs with the uh, this one, uh, PLOs that automatically the course will uh, become effective. The course will become effective. So that is the thing. Thank you, dear sir. Thank you, ma'am. It's time to wind up the session. Yes. The essence of all beautiful art is gratitude. We raise our hearts in gratitude and thank the Almighty for blessing us all with this delightful and enlightening session. I acknowledge the valuable presence of the chief guest of the day, Dr. S. Veeramani, Assistant Professor of English, Government Arts College, Kulitale, for his words of wisdom that radiated the source of energy within us on the topic, exercise of outcome-based education in English language and literature. Thank you, dear sir for planting you, the seeds of knowledge through this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Once, once again, I thank uh, principal and secretary and uh, mother superior and uh, uh, head of the Department of English and the organizers and the participants. I thank you, everyone. I thank you. I express my deep sense of gratitude to our respected principal, Reverend Sister Dr. S. J. Sirani, and our secretary and mother superior, Reverend Sister Dr. B.J. Queensley Jayanti, for your guidance in all of our activities that ensures us to do right thing in a right way. Thank you, dear sisters. I mention my deep sense of appreciation to the convener, the head department of English, Ms. Patricia Alfin Nirmala, for her efforts in organizing this webinar successful. And I also thank the faculties of the department of English for their kind cooperation and support. I acknowledge my gratitude to Reverend Sister Dr. Jashita, the Head Department of Computer Science and Technical Assistant, Ms. Bhuvana, for their technical support in conducting the webinar fruitful. Finally, I thank all the participants from various parts of the nation and a special thanks to participants from other countries for making this webinar successful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, one and all.